Good morning. Welcome back to my studio. I'm Mary Corrado from Mary Corrado Interiors here in Portland, Oregon. And I am here today to show you such a fun process. This is the Caproni plaster wrap. The plaster and the linen all in one and you can wrap your furniture. Okay, I'm gonna turn the camera down and I'm going to show you. When you have a piece that you are going to do your plaster wrap on, you must first coat it with one step paint. It really just needs one coat and then we are ready to accept the plaster. So what we do is this plaster wrap is 12 inches wide, which is wonderful because it will cover this whole drawer face without any seams, which is exactly what you want to keep your furniture looking tidy and really pristine. This roll is also 60 feet long, so you will have lots and lots of wraps so that you can do several projects at once. Okay, so I'm going to get my scissors. We're going to measure this out and we'll cut this. We want it to overlap and turn under. So I'm gonna give myself a little extra. Cuts really easily. Now what we wanna do, once we have it kind of placed on our piece, we will take either a chippy brush like this from Amy Howard, or I found that I really like this brush from Amy Howard. This is just one of her round ones, but it gets nice and wet and it covers a lot of area. Because what we're going to do is take our brush, dip it in some water, kind of lukewarm tap water, and we're just gonna start pouncing. You want to pounce and make sure this gets a little bit wet and messy, but that's the one way that this plaster will start to soften and stick. So don't be shy on the water. And you just pounce as you go. Oh, and come on and say hi. Tell us where you're from and share this with three friends so your name can go into a drawing to win your own plaster wrap. You don't really have to brush it. You can just up and down motions. Now, this is all water-based. It cleans up nicely with water. You don't have to worry about any VOCs, anything like that. The one-step paint is the base it needs to adhere. Now, I'm just pouncing down the sides. I'll show you on that side, too. Pouncing down the edges. This is such a great way to make, even though it's been around for thousands of years, it feels modern right now to have this texture on a piece of furniture. It's beautiful on simple, straight edged, plain chests and coffee tables, consoles, all that good stuff. Let me get this to where I can show you the side. I'm just wrapping this under. It should stick really nicely. We're just gonna wrap the sides of this also, but I'll show you after I do the top. So I am gonna just trim this a little bit. You don't need a ton of overhang on this. Like I said, 
said it's a little drippy, but you want it, you do not want it too dry or it won't have a great adhesion. So I just kind of run my hand over it, make sure it is pressed down. And then we'll do the same for the corners. Just kind of, I'm going to trim it so there's not a lot of excess in the corner. Get that wet. That is down. And I'm going to wrap this around. Trim a little more so it doesn't show on the top. Here, I'll get that wrapped and then I'll show you what goes. your best to make clean lines not a lot of overlapping okay let me show you this just wrapped it around wrapped it around and this will dry perfectly well it will take probably several hours before it is dry. You can um, speed it along with a heat gun or a hair dryer if you'd like. So I will finish this up and we will move on to the next step. Since we don't have a lot of time, I have a drawer that I've already wrapped and I've already done the next step, one step paint, to paint over the plaster wrap. I used Amy's Lux Gray, just did a good coat on it, and that's it. We're ready for the next step. Now, the next step is using milk paint. And the color I have chosen is two parts, a Amalfi Coast, so if you can see that color in there, to one part noir. And so this will make a really beautiful blue-gray tone. And I made it last night. It helps to make your paints the night before. So what you could do is you could wrap your whole piece in one day, let it dry overnight, and that night mix your milk paint. You'll be ready to be using your milk paint after you do your one step, and that way your milk paint will be ready. It will be nice and absorbed in together. So give this a big stir. When you use milk paint, you want to go back and agitate it practically with every brush stroke every time you dip your brush in you want to make sure that you are making sure that all of the sediment in the bottom is mixed in with the water so there is nice smoothness it's a very watery consistency but it does paint on beautifully do not be afraid of the wateriness it is just the nature of a milk paint. And also this, when it's wet in its wet form, it is a much darker color. So when it dries, it will dry down to the powder form color of when it was dry. Okay, so let's get this nice and stirred. Chip brush I'm gonna use. Just dip in and get it all stirred up. Get all the sediment off the sides. Offload a bit because it's very drippy. And just paint.
Now milk paint, like I said, you can mix it the night before. If you are going to need a lot of milk paint for one project, I would mix the whole amount of milk paint and store the container in the refrigerator. It will last in the refrigerator for up to two weeks. If you mix the night before and you just want to use it the next day only, you do not need to put it in the fridge. It will be just fine. So remember this will dry down much lighter and just be careful, it's drippy and you really don't want drips. So do your best just to get a nice even coat. And we'll let this dry. And then we will come back and we will antique it and we'll work with our waxes on it also. Now that this is dry, I did use my blow dryer and I'm rushing just a little tiny bit for the sake of the video, but um, just make sure it's very important that your layers are very dry in between coats so that the next step can work beautifully. Okay, so let's turn this back down. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take Amy Howard's antiquing glaze and we are going to pour into a cup a little bit of antiquing glaze. Kind of shake it well before you do. And we are going to use our seawool sponge. So let's soak it, get it nice and saturated. And we also want to get a lot of the liquid out. We don't want it too dry, but we don't want it too sopping wet either. So now at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the whole surface. We're not gonna start pulling anything yet. We're just going to get everything wet. I see it's already taking some of the milk paint off, but let's Get it everywhere. The antiquing glaze will also darken the milk paint besides removing the milk paint. So it's actually quite a nice way to give more depth to your piece. everywhere. Okay, now I'm going to rub back a little bit of edges where it naturally would have worn. I'm not going to go back into the center. It already has worn plenty. And if it's too much, I can always go back with my milk paint and add more in. But you want it to be a natural wear where somebody would have been opening, touching the top, the edges, rubbing against the edges, maybe where there's hardware, that's where the wear would show up. Okay, so I'm going to, once again, blow this dry. I wanna see if I like how modeled it is, and if not, I'm going to go back with a little more milk paint and fill it in. Okay, I'm gonna show this to you. Do you see that depth? And that color variation, that is purely done because of milk paint. Because you are able to take layers off, you don't have to sand it. Using the antiquing glaze will lift it. And once, even once you wax it, it will give it that much more depth. Now, this to me looks really beautiful. But let's, let me show you, if you think this looks a little too worn, 
then let me show you. You can take another one of your sea wool sponges. Make sure your milk paint is perfectly stirred. Dip your sponge in, get it nice and soaked. And you can go back on top. And you can add a little more milk paint where you think you might want it. I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll be ready to move on. Okay. We are dry, but I think we are ready to wax. Let's show you what it looks like after we wax. Next, we are ready for our light wax and dark wax. And I know I've said it many, many times, but you always start with the light wax and you use about follow up once your light wax has come to tack, you follow up with about 10% of dark wax but you always do your light wax first. You never use this by itself. It will completely change the project and it really will ruin it. So let's get our light wax puck. You get your brush for the light wax, load up. And offload. You always offload. You don't want too clumpy of wax. You want to make sure it's kind of evenly distributed in your brush but not clumpy at all. And then we are going to carefully go over everywhere. We really just want to lightly brush over it. You do need wax with milk paint because you do need to protect milk paint. Okay, I can feel it on here. And honestly, we don't really want to overly buff this piece either. Kind of the beauty of this is that flat, flat finish. Okay. So kind of let this come to tack a bit. And we'll come back in with the dark wax. Okay, I am now going to add the dark. I have a clean dark brush. Fill it up. Offload. And since this is a drawer, it naturally would be a little dirtier on the edges. I'm not going to just randomly put it here and there. I'm going to be very careful about where it needs a little highlighting. And don't press too hard. It shows up. It's actually really beautiful. I wish you could see this better. I'll hold it up for you so you can see it. I'm going to do a little bit in the center where my knob is. I'm going to go back. A little on my edges. could probably dirty up a little bit. Okay. Can you see it? My final, final step 
is going to be Dust of Ages. This will add the final bit of kind of a darker finish. It will get into some of these little tiny areas and create dust like it's been there forever. So you're going to just kind of grind it into the surface. It gets really dusty. So if you need to wear a mask, please do. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of brush off the excess. Now we will need a clean, soft cloth. So just give it a, kind of like you're polishing a shoe, hit drag type of motion. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. And people will just say, how did you do that? That's incredible. So there you go. That is our tutorial on the new Caproni wrap. There is plenty in here. You could do a lot of projects with this. So go to Amy Howard at home. You can find your 12 inch by 60 foot roll of Caproni plaster wrap and you can create something amazing too. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I will answer them.